Hey, friends. I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Tom Utes. He's going to tell you about his friendship with the great Richard Dobson. So I can't remember the, the exact year um, right now, but it would be the year after Tom's Van Zandt passed away. His friend Rex Bell um, still has a club in, in Galveston, Texas called the Old Quarter. The original Old Quarter used to be in Houston, which is where Tom's recorded his iconic record uh, live at the Old Quarter. But then Rex moved it to Galveston. And I had, a, I was at that point, I, I was probably in my mid-20s. I was really, really, really into Towns Van Zandt and Guy Clark and the whole Texas songwriter thing. And so I had heard that there was going to be a the first annual Towns Van Zandt wake at the Old Quarter in Galveston. And I decided that I wanted to go. So I played a New Year's Eve gig in Austria that on, on the 31st. And that's a whole crazy story but um my wife eva came with me to the gig and we played till about three o'clock in the morning then took a cab that got us to the airport in salzburg salzburg from there we took a flight to vienna and then we flew to houston and we just about made it in time to drive to to galveston and to attend the first annual towns van zandt wake which was on january 1st and i can't remember the year but you can look it up so anyway we made it there and it was it was amazing. A lot of great people played and Rex played and Rex asked me to play a couple songs and I did and that was cool. And I remember where it's funny how you remember certain instances in your life that are really important. I, I remember the lighting very often. And so I remember the door opening and this person walked in with the with the gig bag over his shoulder and sort of a fedora hat and uh, didn't know who he was. I had heard the name Richard Dobson before, but didn't hadn't paid much attention to it. And he got up and played uh, Snow and On Raton with uh, Rex playing bass with him and singing harmony. And it was just, I mean, it's one of the most beautiful songs that was ever written, but it was such a great delivery. It really just just knocked me out. And so it was Richard Dobson. We didn't really meet that night. It was just too many people. And I think he he wanted to get out. Knowing Richard as well as I came to know him later, I can I can totally understand that he just wanted to come in, play two songs and go home and be by himself and smoke a joint and drink drink a bottle of wine and not be in the middle of a hundred people talking about towns. So anyway, well, it was Richard Dobson. Well, a couple of, we were back in Germany and um, I got an email from Rex Bell saying, hey, Richard Dobson is living in Switzerland now, uh, such and such a place, Schaffhausen. I went like, well, wow, that's just three hours up the road. You guys, and Rex goes like, well, you guys should get together. Okay, well, I, so he put us in touch, and I, I told Richard that we had, that I'd heard him that night, and I, that I had a studio and a band, and so we met on the. I had a gig, and I was driving back on a Sunday morning, and Richard met me on a certain spot on the Autobahn, which I remember exactly where that was, but that doesn't make any difference. And and we drove to the. He followed me to our studio, and his wife Edith was with him, and we had a really nice visit and he recorded a couple of songs at my studio just a couple of demos that he wanted to make one the first one he recorded was a song called a place called idaho that's still one of my favorite songs of his and after he had after they left after two days i put a couple of guitar things on idaho and a bass and drummer friend of mine played on it and it made it became the, it was the beginning of us working together and making i think six records together and it's, I still love that, that cut. I don't, I, I like certain things about my playing on it, but and certain things I don't, but that's just, you know, what happens over the course of 25 years. But I still really, really love that song. And it says so much about Richard's style of writing and his, what mattered to him and what he liked to talk about. Anyway, we became really, really, really good friends. I mean, we spent, and I had, you know, I had the infrastructure that he was lacking. I had a van, I had a band, I had access to gigs. And so we started playing together. We played lots and lots of gigs, um, sometimes just as a duo, most of the time as a four piece, sometimes as big as a six piece band. We played in Spain, we played in Switzerland, we played in France, we played in Holland, played, obviously played in Germany and Austria. And it was great. It was a, it was a, the, the perfect follow up education and edu in discovering towns and Guy Clark. And now all of a sudden there was a guy who not just didn't just know those people, but was one of them, you know. And so I got a much deeper understanding of why 
is this as good as it is? Why is David only as good as it is? And I mean, it's just different when somebody walks you through it. And Richard was an incredible teacher in the sense that he never taught. He never said, you should do this or listen to this or this. It was just the way he wore himself and the way he talked. He led me to certain things. I'm, I'm not sure if he intended to do that, but he did. And um, so when I moved here, it was obviously a big hit for him because all of a sudden the band was gone, the van was gone, the gigs and all that. But he was uh, the main guy who said, you need to do this. You need to go to Nashville. Otherwise, you'll regret this all your life. And so, you know, it's another example of an incredible friend who takes a hit but wants you to do the right thing, you know. So once I moved, once we moved here, he came to visit us quite a bit and stayed with us sometimes for a month, sometimes for six weeks, and it was always great. And when we bought this this house here out in the country where we are at now, we have this in-law apartment, and that was really great because they could come and they they could just stay here and you know pretty much indefinitely, and we loved having them, and we could make records and write together, and we did all that. When I when I first met Richard, he had just re self released a book called The Gulf Coast Boys, and it's a really really interesting perspective on the whole singer Texas singer songwriter thing and how those guys came to Nashville and what they did when they came to Nashville and it's also an interesting perspective of somebody like Richard who wanted to be on the inside of that but who also never really fit into the music business and went back to Texas a lot to work on oil rigs to to make a living but also uh, he was he was very interested in writing and poetry and music but he was also interested in hunting and fishing and um exploring the country and seeing things and so that's that that's part of that's all in those books and he wrote a book later called exile on the high rhine exile on the high rhine yes about living in in europe and that's a really that's a that's a strange read for me because i'm in the book a lot so it's a little strange to read but i it makes me relive a certain parts of that of that time in my life. And I, it also it's also interesting because it's his interpretation of certain things that doesn't necessarily overlap with mine. And I can see how him being in a, in a land that was somewhat foreign to him uh, influenced his perception of things we did and how we did them. And then um, he just, this just recently came out, but it's not publicly available yet. I hope it will be. It's a book that he wrote called All of This Was Mine that was based, um, started as a song that he wrote about the Galveston storm. And then he figured there was a lot more meat on that bone and he turned it into a novel. And that was his first novel. It was not an autobiographical piece like the other books that he'd written, but a, a historical novel about the Galveston storm flood. And it's really great. Richard was like a, not just like a brother to me, he was my brother, but because he was so close, I'll always, I'll, I'll also be honest and say, I'm not sure that he was always the best um, the best person to evaluate his performances. So it's, there's a lot of people that I hold in very, very high esteem where I'm not sure that they were their own best editors. And I think Richard was a little bit like that. So it's a little tricky for me to point to one particular record. But if you want to, the greatness of his writing is in a song called, is in this song called, A Place Called Idaho, or a song called Houston Town that he wrote about his old parents in Houston that had an old black man who worked for them as sort of a handyman. And it describes that relationship and all the intricacies of that relationship in a four minute song that'll just knock your socks off. It's an incredible song. So I'd rather point to certain songs, Forever For All Of Us For Certain is a song that Guy Clark recorded that is as good as anything you'll ever hear and Chris Stapleton just recorded it. I think that's the best song in Heartworn Highway's movie. Well, for my taste, it's 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 as good a song as any anybody's ever written, and uh, doesn't happen often that Guy Clark records an outside song, or didn't happen often, but he recorded that. And like I said, Stapleton just recorded it, which was a nice thing for for Richard's widow to have happen now, you know, because that's 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 a good thing. Um, there's. Um, lots of other ones that he wrote when he thought that he was still working, f trying to write for the Nashville market. There's one I called I Give Myself Away that I think is an incredible song that somebody should have, could have recorded. Lots, lots of good stuff. 
Yeah, that's Richard Dobson. I mean, he's he's three years gone now. Still think about him all the time. This place is full of stuff that makes me think of him. One of his guitars is here now that I inherited from him. There's all kinds of stuff, you know. No, I, I like that. I like feeling that presence. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.